So people who have already joined, uh, uh, welcome to this webinar. We will wait for another couple of minutes for other people to join. We've, we've got uh, four people already um, joined. We'll just wait for a couple of minutes before we kick off. Thank you. Dipinder, I think we could start then. I'll uh, start with the introduction. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Um, let me introduce myself. I am Viraj Rath, uh, CEO at Brahmam, and uh, I would like to I uh, wish you all a very, very happy good morning or good evening as, as you may be from different locations. Um, we, are, we are beginning to start this new webinar series um, from today. Uh, incidentally, as a company, Brahmam just completed 20 years. So this is on the occasion of completing 20 years that we have uh, launched this uh, webinar series. And uh, as, as a very first, uh, we have, uh, you know, in, in the true culture of the company that, that we are, uh, we trust and believe that partnerships are the way to go forward. And one of our uh, very old um, uh, acquaintances um, that we know for a long, long time, he has become our partner over the last uh, almost two years now, I would say. And uh, we are beginning to uh, see the fruits of our relationship in many different ways. So um, let me tell you a little bit about uh, what this partnership is about and a little bit about Dipinder, who is with me. You can see him on screen. And I'll give you a little bit brief about this interface so that you don't struggle in using this. This is a new one for me. So, uh, you know, apologies if you if anything goes wrong. Uh, you know, we are trying this uh, technology tool um, uh, today and it's, it seems it's, it's a quite an innovative tool. Anyway, so um, Dipinder actually runs uh, Prudel Labs. So we, we are partnering with Prudel Labs uh, on uh, something that we, uh, with, which is close to our hearts, which is the business of internationalization in, in our industry, uh, which is. I think uh, there is some. Sorry, difficulty. I think uh, you you lost yeah, the. Yeah, Virat, right? you're back now. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry about that. Um, where where did you lose me? You just started talking about me. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, I can't hear you, Dipinder. Uh, can you hear me well now? 
Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, audible now. Yeah. Yeah, you were just talking about our partnership. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, just to uh, uh, take it a little further, so this partnership is about uh, internationalization, and uh, you know the uh, the concept of internationalization is very close to our heart when it comes to uh, you know the, uh, you know our business in translation and localization. And uh, in this webinar, we are briefly going to discuss um, uh, some of the basics of software internationalization. Uh, how do you take care of internationalization? Some of the benefits uh, that that would automatically come in internationalizing the software, and a little bit on the process of uh, software interna internationalization. Now, Dipinder, um, I, I know him for quite some time now, and Trudel Labs is a fairly new company. Uh, but Dipinder has had a very uh, strong stint at uh, Computer Associates as well as um, Dell Labs for a long time. So he started off his career in this field into internationalization. So without wasting a lot of time, let me quickly tell you a little bit about the interface. You can always al already see the PowerPoint slide, which is visible uh, to you in a very small window. You can actually drag it and make it bigger on your screen uh, wherever you like. You can type in your questions in the chat box. We will be able to see. The last minutes of 10 minutes of the presentation, we will be taking up questions, uh, whatever you type in, in the text box. Um, that's about it. And uh, over to you, Dipinder, and, and and I'll I'll be in the background if you need me. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Biraj. Hope I'm audible to everyone. Good morning. Good evening, uh, everyone uh, from where uh, different part of the world you would be joining in. Um, so so let's let's start with this, and we just have like 30 minutes uh, in this webinar. Um, and then quickly jump into what internationalization is, what it is all about, what you should be taking care of, and how we as a company can support you, uh, both Brahmam and Trudel Labs. Okay, uh, so why you should not be tying the cart before the horse is, is the title, which means that you should be internationalizing first and not jump to the uh, localization or, um, or doing the translation immediately. So what is internationalization? Internationalization is a process of making one source code which should work for all languages where it will accommodate any operating system, any browser language for any region or, or any culture. Um, and in, in, in the abbreviation, uh, there are 18 characters in between I and N and that's how it is abbreviated as I18N. Now let's get more uh, into what are the 10 things we're gonna, uh, we're gonna understand in this webinar about internationalization. There are many, many aspects of, uh, of internationalization and it would completely depend on the software you are planning to globalize uh, or localize into. So here are the few items which definitely makes a lot of sense if you are planning to do localization into different, different countries and different regions. So number one is the date time. What are the date time formats? Um, uh, how, how you should be representing date uh, in let's say in various countries. Um, I do have slides for each of this, uh, but this is just a summary of what I'm gonna talk about. Uh, second is the numbers. So the numbers do have different formats too, um, based on the different countries, different region. Currency, uh, as you know, there are some dollar symbol, there is yen, euro, rupee, etc. Mailing address, uh, mailing addresses also have different formats. A uh, few countries need the postal code uh, and, and before the country name. Uh, likewise, you have uh, various different formats. Then we have sort and search functionality. If your application is uh, having a lot of search and sorting functionality, then what are the things you need to take care of? Do not leave the content in source code, meaning hard-coded strings. If your strings are hard-coded within the source code, it becomes a little challenging at the time of translation or at the time of localization. Unicode or double byte or multi-byte character support is very important when you're looking for uh, regions like Asia or Middle East uh, and even European languages when you're planning to do your, uh, your localization into these regions. Bidirectional, uh, bi uh, support for Middle East regions, or in, in other words, I can say right, like right to left support is also very much important when you're looking at Arabic, Hebrew, Persian, and those kind of languages. When you are embedding any text on the images, uh, then it all the time, it becomes very difficult 
to do localization. And the GUI elements, uh, user interface, uh, where you have some buttons which have some text written. So you need to put some extra space around that. So, so we're going to look uh, briefly into all these points. Um, and uh, as and when you have more questions, we can definitely take uh, post, post these slides. So what, are, what is date and time uh, all about? So if I ask you the question of how are you going to read uh, the date, which is 806, which is today's date, uh, how are you going to read it? So if, if you write this date in America, this, is, this could be like a month comes first, then the date, and then the year. So it is like 6th of August, 2020, uh, 2020. In India, it is like 8th June, it becomes in 2020. In Japan, it becomes like 20th June, 2008. And then we have various other countries have different formats. I'm just taking a few of these examples here. Uh, Canada has year first, then month, and then the date. Brazil has different. Uh, Ireland and UAE has different. And it also, it's not the month, date, and year. But you see the separator is also different in different countries and different regions. Same is with the time. Uh, time, a lot of countries follow 12 hours clock with AM and PM. Uh, many countries have 24 hour clock. And sometimes this AM and PM is also translated when it is Japanese or Arabic and various other uh, uh, countries uh, where it is representing. So this also gets translated. Let's look at the numbers. So numbers also have different formats for different countries. Um, so it is a three uh, digit separator here for US. Germany also have three digits, but at the same time, there's a separator is different. It's a decimal as a separator and then comma as the uh, decimal separator here. And France has a space, Switzerland has something different and India has a different uh, separator altogether. So, so all this really uh, makes a difference when you're looking at localizing your application or internationalizing it into different regions. And as I said, so these are just few examples. Depending on which region, which country you're planning to localize, this may change. Currency. So currencies, again, uh, it's again different formats, uh, different symbols. Uh, few countries or few regions will have currency symbol before the amount and sometimes it is after the amount. So you can clearly see uh, France and Germany uses Euro, but at the same time, there's a difference in the, in the de decimal separator or the number separator. And at the same time, there's a Euro symbol which comes before or at the end. Uh, same as with Switzerland and then uh, India. I'm just taking one example here. Now coming to the mailing addresses, uh, uh, again, each country has a different mailing address uh, format. Uh, so let's assume that you have an application which is an e-commerce website. And now within that e-commerce website or a website which requires some user uh, details in terms of the addresses, and it's a global product or you want to take it to the global market. Uh, so what are the, uh, what could be the form type or how you gonna place your uh, your fields onto the form on the registration form or on the shipping address form. So these things uh, do one need to consider when it is, let's say from England, it's like first name, last name, street name, post postal or town, uh, county uh, may not be needed, uh, but sometimes yes, uh, postal code and the country name. Uh, wherein if you look at the Canada, it is a little different. It is first name, last name, civic address, municipality, province, and the postal code in one line, and then the country name. So here it's broken down into various uh, uh, lines, and wherein Canada is in one, maybe in one line for municipality, province, and postal code. Uh, same is with the Switzerland here. Uh, but what I'm trying to tell you is, uh, let's say you're, you are localizing your application in UK uh, and in Canada, but both speak English, uh, both are English speaking countries, but at the same time, if the registration form is there, how are you going to place your uh, fields or the text boxes? Uh, let's look at the GUI elements or GUI elements, uh, which is like, you need to plan for your text exp expansion. Uh, again, few examples here uh, where English is just a cancel. German is uh, something like abrasion. Uh, Japanese has something else. But if this is a button, button size is fixed, 
and you say cancel need to be translated into four languages so italian is okay but japanese and german will break out from here so what you need to look at when you're lo internationalizing or planning to localize you need to provide extra space here itself so so that it takes care of uh, of the text expansion whenever you do in the future do not embed text on the images uh, this is also very important so assuming i'm just taking this example from our website assuming that this is an image um, and this has a text written and this is all our images so let's say these are three images you have uh, put in in your english website now if you have to localize it let's say in five different languages you have to really spend a lot of time in first is extracting this text out all of this translating it and putting it back into the into the system into the same uh, image which has same look and feel so how are you going to do that so that's that's very important so never embed any text uh, into the image which which will keep increasing your time and effort and it, it will it will not be an efficient model of doing it so it, just imagine that these are three images multiply by five languages now let's say you have 30 images and then five languages right so your not only the translation effort goes up but also your designing and uh, all those design and then integrating back all that effort goes uh, into it which is very costly and at the, at the same time, it's time consuming. Uh, Unicode, a uh, lot of people say UTF-8, UTF-16, UTF-32. Uh, and there are many, many versions of it. And I'm sure a few of you might have already be aware of all these, uh, but, but U Unicode is very important when, when we are uh, talking about any text characters or glyphs uh, which which needs to be processed into a certain way. Um, so so issue issue really starts with uh, when you're not using the converter. So you're not converting that particular string uh, from uh, let's say uh, you you get some data a as a character, but you're not uh, saving it in a right format back into the database or not retrieving it properly. So that's where you, are, you might have seen, if you have experience, you may see sometimes the application gives the question marks or the boxes in, in some places. So the support of Unicode becomes very important uh, when, when you are planning to do the localization. Um, Hard-coded strings, uh, again, a very important, uh, very, very important when, when you have to localize your application. So assuming that you have, let's say, a half a million lines of code which has strings like this which are hard coded and now uh, one person needs to spend some time to scan through the entire source code manually they will go through each and every string uh, or every file to find out the strings and these strings need to be placed in the resource file so imagine that now uh, with this half a million lines of code you say okay now let me let me localize the same source code into japanese you can very well do that. But what will happen is um, you have to maintain two different source code branches. Now, if, if you are having English and Japanese, you have two source code branches. And, and as and when there is some issue which comes in English, you need to fix in Japanese also. So engineering time is, is not very well utilized because you're just fixing one issue functionality wise that need to be fixed in Japanese also. So you're maintaining two source code branch at the same time, fixing the issue in English and fixing the same issue in Japanese. And imagine that now you have to add another feature uh, in English or in the same version, then you have to replicate the same source code into multiple times in Japanese. And now imagine tomorrow the requirement comes from your marketing team and they say that, okay, I need this to be localized into 10 different languages. So there is no way possible that you can have multiple source code branches into different different languages and that's not a very efficient way of doing anything so what we what we suggest here is to do the externalization of the hardcoded strings and these uh, hardcoded strings will have a name and a value key id you can also say key id and the value so there's a key and there's a value for that so if the same thing hello words need to be externalized it has to be in this kind of a format or this file 
it could be XML, it could be RESTx, it could be JSON. It depends on what applications you are building and what type of file you would need. So hard-coded strings becomes very important. And once you have hard-coded, externalize the things into a resource file, that becomes much easier to send for translation, get that translated and in, in, integrate back into the source code so that the localization and translation happens. Uh, yeah, so, so this was kind of a brief about at a very high level what was internationalization. Uh, now, if we just look at the localization, localization is a very simple, very straightforward uh, process or a mechanism. So it, it is a process where we take the internationalized source code of any application and making it locally and cult culturally fit in that particular region of the market. So which means that I have internationalized my product with all the things what I've just talked about. And then once we have make sure that those things are taken care, then your localization phase becomes much easier. Uh, and what do you do in this localization is only translating a lot of content, which you have uh, externalized uh, by doing the uh, externalization mechanism. It could be your own, uh, your own manual process of doing things, which is a tedious process. But if you have taken that, uh, you have created the resource files, you just process it for translation, integrate it back. And that's where uh, it, it, it becomes like a localization. So that's where the localization is. And again, the, in between L and N, there are 10 characters, and this is abbreviated as L10N. So on a conclusion side, so internationalize first, that's very important. Then you need to translate and finally localize it. Still, and, and if you do not internationalize first, there are chances that you're gonna spend a lot of time during localization phase, and the issues you're gonna have are, are will be uh, related to internationalization. So localizability of the application should increase uh, as we go. And that only increases when the internationalization is done very well. So a few differences here uh, between internationalization and localization. So internationalization is a process of making your source code, which can handle any language, culture, or, or a region wherein localization is a process of translating a resource file for each specific language. Another uh, differentiation is uh, a developer or software engineers are involved in this process in internationalization, whereas for localization, language speci specialists are involved. Uh, in internationalization, you work on the source code. In, on localization, you work on the resource file. Internationalization is a first step towards globalizing the application. Localization only starts after the internationalization is complete. Internationalization uh, is like one source code fits all the languages. Localization is each resource file is worked as per the language. So just want to emphasize a little bit more on these two. Um, it's, like, it's like you have today decided to take your product from English to five different regions or five different languages. So you start working on it, start internationalizing it. You have done that internationalization well. You have created the resource files and you have taken care of all other issues related to date, time, number, currency, formats. And then you have localized, you have tested that application and then you are in the market. Now, tomorrow, the requirement comes that another 10 languages need to be added. So those 10 languages are, again, uh, it should be the plug and play for you. So there shouldn't be any engineering effort needed from your engineering team. It should be very simple where <clears throat> you have sent the same resource file, which is already translated into five languages plus English. Now you send that English resource file again, get it back translated into 10 different languages and then integrate that as well. So now your product becomes English plus 15 languages, which is now localized. So it becomes like a plug and play. Uh, localization has to be so smooth that uh, it, it should not be taking too much of your time apart from just checking on the translation or linguistic issues. It should be very straightforward. Yeah, so uh, how we, uh, Prudel and Brahmam can help uh, with, with one of our module 
uh, which is on prudal uh, which is on internationalization this module uh, really helps the developers engineering teams um, to make sure that the internationalization is done as per the standards so what are those uh, features i'll just quickly highlight all of them uh, one is uh, our module uh, provides a support for uh, different ides uh, so uh, these ides are microsoft visual studio uh, on java base we have eclipse netbeans we do have command line interface which is on the point number 10 so we we majority of the time we support almost all technologies and all the file different file types related to source code uh, and we make sure uh, that different uh, file types or from the source code perspective plus uh, different technologies are taken care so that you can scan one single folder which has different java or .NET or mixed type of technologies it can scan and give you the report uh, so IIT and coding standards so all these all these scanning happens at a certain basis. So we are not saying that we have created certain things. So one is the coding standard. So these standards are coming from a, from a certain base uh, as an industry benchmark. We use that framework and make sure that the coding standards are taken care, uh, IIT and coding standards. And we also provide the trending report on how your, how your team is doing your coding. Uh, in other words, Let's say there's a continuous uh, development happening at your end. Now, how do you make sure that each of your developers or engineers are, are, are really doing right internationalization? So this uh, Prudel IATN really comes very handy as and when any check-in happens to the source code, this triggers up and provides you a report, uh, which will tell you how many are the internationalization issues or, the, or where things have gone wrong. Other type of reports are the reports can be shared within the team. So one developer versus various other developers can can see the reports. What are the issues which are coming from the source code and may take certain actions. Push and pull, uh, push or pull or push or fetch is uh, again another feature where you can send the resource file which you have generated. Uh, so this tool helps in externalizing all the hard coded strings from your source code in a fraction of minutes. So let's say you have a half a million lines of code, which may have 10,000 strings. Uh, it can externalize, create the resource bundle, and at the same time, it will uh, replace the values uh, there in the source code with the, with the created uh, ID. So that externalization happens, and once the resource file is created, that can be sent and received uh, uh, to a central uh, TMS system as well. Issue identification, as I mentioned, so all various type of issues like date, time, number, currency, sorting, all that can be done uh, or can be identified using Prudel uh, IAT and module. Uh, and this um, uh, th this will definitely reduce a lot of the engineering effort where your engineers may not even understand the full concept of internationalization. So that's where uh, th this adds a lot of value. Fixing issues, uh, automatically fix issues, as I said, hard coded strings and all. Auditing of IATN and issues, so you can have the audits on the IATN and issues which have been, uh, which has been generated as a report. You can, you can actually check mark uh, all those issues which are being fixed or you have already fixed and which you are planning to fix. So it's kind of a self audit, uh, which you can do on the source code. AI and chatbots, so some interactive reports where Prudel gives you more information on any of the issues, uh, what you have uh, encountered during the scan. CLI, just touch base. Build server integration is something similar uh, where uh, as and when uh, developers checks in the source code, it, the, the command line interface uh, happens and this internationalization uh, plugin triggers. And uh, this gives the continuous uh, continuous check on your source code, which is internationalized or not internationalized. So these are the key features. Definitely we have a few more where we can help uh, the teams who are looking to localize uh, into different uh, languages. We can definitely support that. Yeah, with that, uh, I think uh, the, these were my slides. Uh, Biraj, if you're there. Uh, yeah, you can hear me. 
Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Deep, uh, so much. So we have a question um, uh, here, and the question is that: Are there any uh, internationalization issues specific to Indian writing systems apart from the character support? So, so definitely, that's one Indian character support, which is uh, which we need to which we need to take care or we take care of using the UTF or Unicode support. Uh, apart from that, uh, we have not seen anything major on that. But our, our scanning on the internationalization module, which is does, it highlights all the Indian uh, language uh, type support as well. Just uh, extending that, uh, Deep, uh, what, what uh, I also know is uh, languages like Thai, which don't have separators. Any special challenges with those kind of languages? Not really, because if you look at Japanese also, uh, we do have the separator towards the end, but we do not uh, see any any challenges uh, when, when we are doing localization into the Asian languages also. Perfect. So 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 basically it is language agnostic, whether it is right to left, because the most issues we face in uh, in, in generally with uh, any kind of uh, situation is uh, either right to left languages. Uh, mm -hmm. languages which don't have any separators like Thai and then mm -hmm. the Indian ones have a special uh, affinity towards uh, you know having the combination characters so many times the combination characters seem to break up in the GUI oh that's right that's right so all this support from right to left Arabic etc it, it's been taken care of by our product Perfect. so that's that's that is the support that is the um, I would say that's where we come in as an expert where we have built this tool we understand each language requirement, be it Indian or Arabic or Middle East or Asian. We understand each of these language set. And based on that, the module has been created and refined over the period of time so that it catches all the potential IT and issues and gives you the uh, gives you the seamless results. Perfect. Uh, there is a question from my side, Deep, I think. Uh, so t tell us a little bit about uh, the products available in the market and how you stand out uh, as, as, a, as a differentiator and, and why would somebody you know, look at your product? Right. So uh, I think uh, from the internationalization perspective, there is uh, one competitor so far, um, which definitely has a lot of features. Uh, and, and, and we are also there in terms of support of technology or support of the language, support of different file types, etc. Now, how do we stand out is the features what I just mentioned in the previous slide were mainly from the AI, for example, the chatbot system and the auditing of the issues, a uh, few of the false positives. Um, and then the, 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 the list may go on, uh, but that's where we have done fantastically. Uh, and our team has done a great job in in, in ensuring that uh, that we have uh, we have the lesser false positives, we have the support of the AI and chatbot. So, for example, if uh, somebody do not even know what is a file or date format in Norway, for example, so what's that date format he should be using? So, so rather he goes into Google and try to find out. Our AI system does everything for him. The other uh, important difference is on the rule set. So the earlier systems do use rule set. We are also using rule set, but at the same time, we are moving into the AI and machine learning way where rule set becomes the old fashioned kind of approach. So, so, so the key difference is what we have seen with a few of our clients uh, were the uh, for lesser false positive auditing of the issues, which becomes very important when you have list of 10,000 uh, issues, what you see, and you have to ensure each of those issues are fixed or not. We we help or our, our, our system helps them to audit those issues very well. Yeah, Deep, can you hear me? I can. Yes, I can. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the last question was uh, how is Prudel targeted more towards clients or is it more towards LSPs? So, this particular module of ours uh, definitely is for, for the dev teams or the clients. Uh, 
but it's not that we cannot support LSP. So for example, LSPs have greater reach to their uh, clients who, whom, with whom they are already working with. Uh, so let's say a client of an LSP is, is into IT where they are lot, translating a lot of things. So we as uh, Prudal can be the extended team of that LSP and then we can we can provide our support from internationalization perspective. So this LSP can also take Prudal, ask their client or the end customer that give me the source code, let me do the quick scan of your source code and give you the report. And these reports uh, can be shared with their client and that client uh, can, can, can come back and say, okay, I really need that. Uh, I am really happy with the report what you provided. Can I go ahead and, and maybe subscribe it or take a next step towards it? Okay, perfect. I think we are running out of time now. I, I would like to thank everybody here who've taken time to listen to both of us. If anybody knows of any uh, customer or any anybody in, in your community, please spread the word about this partnership. And uh, you know we, uh, we are truly uh, in a situation that we can uh, take this partnership forward and help customers uh, you know, solve this internationalization puzzle in, in, in our industry. Thank you so much and, yeah. and uh, hope to hear from you also. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank Thanks you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.